time we choose to love someone, it costs so much to us. Now, carrying a baby nine months in the womb of a mother, I think it's not a joke. It's not an easy task. And at the time of delivery, it's a severe labor, the, what they go through. And even after the birth of a child, subsequently, if you think about the way parents take care of a newborn, it's not going to be an easy task for anyone. It's going to be more intensive, and it really drains our energy. Now, I believe parents understand what I'm talking about. Every time we want to extend our love to someone, it costs us. You know, love requires us to pay the price. You now, think about any love relationship. For any love relationship to go well, it requires a certain amount of commitment from both the partner. And you can understand a true commitment requires sacrifice. Today you can imagine you know, young girls and boys, they try to love each other and the amount of you know, sacrifice they make, they are willing to make from their side. So sacrifice at times become a common denominator for any kind of love relationship. Always love comes with a price tag in it. Scripture says in John chapter 3 verse 16, Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. You know, right at the Garden of Eden, when Adam chose to rebel against God, the creator of his life, he lost innocence in his life. And he incurred, you know, penalty of physical and spiritual death right at the Garden of Eden. His mind was darkened. His mind was corrupted by sin. You know, the mind, so the same mind was started the, the, the descendants started inheriting the same mindset. And today, we do so. The rebellion separated man from God. You know, man was kind of, you know, ashamed of his deeds. And in fact, he was hiding behind the leaves in the Garden of Eden. So do we at times. We want to hide because we don't want to be seen by people around us. His, he lost his ability to think good, anything good in his life. This rebellion, in fact, it produced a human state of depravity, total corruption, total wickedness in his life. And we call this rebellion as a sin, because anything you do, try to do against God, it becomes a sin in our lives. And any sin must be punished. It may not be noticed for a while, but eventually, any sin must be punished because what the Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Eternal death in hell. But the gift of God is the eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, but this ever-loving God had to rework his plan. You know, as we know, any rework costs us so much. Like any project director you know, God was sitting and kind of reworking his plan. I created man and eventually he fell in sin and there came a great separation between man and God. God did everything out of love and he couldn't handle it and he had to rework. And he sat down and he calculated the kind of investment he has to make in order to get the rework done and looking at the profit, the reward that is going to bring and eventually he considered, he decided to do go ahead with the rework of, on his plan. You know, because God created mankind in his own image. He created them in order to have a love relationship with mankind. You know, in fact, we are children of God. The kind of relationship that we have with our God is we are his children. This relationship was established out of love. That's why the Bible says, God so loved the world. God couldn't handle the separation. 
He took an immediate decision and immediate action to invest for mankind, to get mankind back to him. As love requires to pay a price, it demanded God to pay the price of sending his only begotten son to this world. Scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Today we celebrate the price that God paid by sending his only son to this world. Jesus came down to this strange world. He was with the Father in heaven. He came to this strange world. And he was kind of totally alienated from his Father. You know, today we exchange gifts because we rejoice the birth of Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, it was a sacrifice that, made, that was made by God. And we exchange gifts in remembrance of God giving little baby Jesus as a gift to mankind. We didn't pay for it, but God paid for that gift. God paid for it. You know, the, by the time the man's sin have, sins have increased, it has become so huge that the devil got hold of man. Now, where there is sin, of course, we don't see God there. We see the evil things happening there, evil things flourishing there. But of course, it was God's creation. And God's heart was so overwhelmed with what is going on in the mankind. The devil turned man's destiny from heaven to hell. As a flock, everybody was walking, marching towards hell. And God couldn't handle it, as I said. Any love relationship, once broken, it requires a sacrifice as a ransom in order to restore that relationship. That sacrifice, the baby which was born, as we call it as on the day of Christmas, that baby need to be sacrificed at the cross 33 and a half years later. Was this in the redemptive plan of God? Yes. Was it a total surprise for God? No. God knew that. His son is going to take the cross in his life. God out of love sent his only begotten son to this world to be born as a baby and eventually to die at the cross because to forgive your sin and my sin, a man has to die. An animal sacrifice is no more good. A man has to die. And you and I cannot die because our blood is corrupt you. We inherit that corruption from our forefathers a man has to die, but he has to have a pure blood. Only God can do that. God came in the form of Jesus. And he incarnated in the form of Jesus, little baby. And he grew without any sin. At the age of 33, he gave his life at the cross. God loved us. And Jesus inherited that love from God. And he allowed himself to be crucified at the cross. You know, I know all of you, most of you would have seen the Jesus movie or some movie where you see the crucifixion scene. Jesus never refused. He gave himself to die. The only reason was out of love. Any relationship that comes out of love demands sacrifice. A true love relationship de demands sacrifice. So the God accomplished his redemptive work. The result of the sacrifice is eternal life. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him. Shall not perish. But have an eternal life. You know through Jesus. Man regained, regained the relationship. That was lost at the garden of Eden. His sacrificial love. Was more than enough to restore that relationship back. That means. The destiny is no more hell. But it is heaven. Now, there is only one life. After the judgment, we all need to stand before the judgment throne of God on one day. And we need to give an account, of, account for what we have done when we live in this body on this earth. And Jesus came down to change our destiny from hell to heaven. You know, we were all condemned because of our sins. And we were about to be thrown in the hell. Bible says the place where we see fire 
and brimstone. Brimstone is sulfur, boiling sulfur, more than four, 450 degrees centigrade. That's the definition of description of hell. You know, God came down from heaven to change the destiny from hell to heaven. The sacrifice that made us made at the cross helped, really helped us to escape hell. You know, as we know, any love relationship cannot be maintained without commitment from both the partners. God made this commitment from his end and he sent his son to be born at this, at this, in this world and eventually to be sacrificed at the cross. He perfectly accomplished what he planned to do. So the question may be, so what can I do? Again, back to John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You need to respond. We need to respond today to God saying, as the scripture says, those who ever believes in him. You know, it is a love relationship that we are talking about this morning. God wants us to believe the love that he has upon mankind. We are not really talking about any religion here, not religious system. We are talking about the relationship, the human request to have with his creator, with her creator. The love your creator has upon our lives cost himself sending his only son to this world and see him tortured to death for six hours, six long hours at the cross. All because of his love. He wants us to respond to this love this evening. We can do two things today. Either we can believe in him or not believe in him. Either we can say, God, I don't really care about your love, that's fine. We can reject him or we can accept him. Saying that, Lord, I understand that it's a relationship that you are trying to build with me. It's nothing about the religion. We can either accept him or reject him. It is up to us. If we accept him, if we accept his love, believing what I talked about for a few minutes, the Bible says, his precious blood that he shed at the cross is more than enough to cleanse us from all our sins. You know, walking in this world, not having any guilt in our mind, I believe it is a blessing that God wants us to carry this evening as we are here to celebrate the birth of Lord Jesus.